Um, now this part of the program is, uh, it's a lot of information, um, kind of kind of quickly. Uh, we're going to hear from a number of the dozens of degree programs available at the UAA College of Health. Um, each program uh, is going to be presented for five minutes. Um, with one minute left, I will be unmuting myself and just giving a, a gentle interjection, just saying one minute left. Uh, since most people will be sharing their screens, I can't just, you know, flash a one minute on my on my camera. So um, keep your eye out for that. If you have questions for our speakers for a specific department or if it's for everyone altogether, please put it in the chat box. Our presenters will be hanging out after their talk to answer those questions in the chat box. Again, these questions won't be responded to out loud, um, mainly just in the interest of time. We want everyone to be able to have a fair amount of time. Um, so questions in the chat box. And then uh, just really quickly before we get started, I wanna remind everyone and anyone new that has come in that we are doing a scavenger hunt during today's program and through Monday. Um, the scavenger hunt has been emailed to all of the registrants in the email that you signed up with. And I just put it again in the chat box. Um, so there's going to be some, uh, some scavenger hunt questions answered during this talk. You don't have to be actively working on the scavenger hunt during it. I encourage you to really listen to uh, the different programs um, and uh, think about what questions you might have for everyone. So um, our first panel, uh, we're actually going to start off with uh, TJ Miller, who we all just met with our, with our brain break. All right, welcome back, TJ. Hi, everyone. Thank you again. Uh, I hope you all got a little bit of laughter and also some movement there. Uh, if you can see my screen, give me a thumbs up. So I've been with the uh, University of Alaska Anchorage for uh, 15 years now, and I've had the pleasure of being in the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation, HPER, or as many people call us, HYPER. And uh, we are kind of hyper. We like to move. We like to be active. Um, we offer a Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology, which is the study of human mu movement, basically. And uh, the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation is leads the state of Alaska in cultivating confident, competent health, fitness, and recreation professionals who enhance the health and well-being of people and communities. So what do we do? And what is kinesiology? Well, again, it's a noun. It's the study of the mechanics of body movement. And with this, um, we don't necessarily have transcripted concentrations, but we definitely have some foci that we would like people to, um, to think about. And so if you're into uh, physical therapy, athletics, um, personal training, exercise, fitness activities, uh, yoga, uh, sports, all of those types of things, we're the department for you. Um, we can also be a a uh, really great pipeline program to many graduate programs, even pre-med, uh, physician assistant, uh, our occupational uh, therapy program on campus with Creighton. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities and you can get employment right after and I'll go into that in a sec. But if you're interested in exercise, exercise science, physical therapy, occupational therapy, we have sort of a, a focus for that in our exercise science. For those of you that want to teach PE and health in a school, we are also your uh, track to get there. If you're into health and wellness promotion, uh, keeping people healthy, maintaining health, um, increasing quality of life, um, we are sort of prehab in the fact that we can help people prevent sickness and illness um, before they go to the doctor and maybe reduce chronic diseases. We have that in the health and wellness program. And then my personal favorite and brand new to the state of Alaska, and I'm extremely excited for this, is the addition of recreational therapy. Yes, you've heard of physical therapy, you've heard of occupational therapy. Well, this is recreation therapy. And really, you can get paid to play. And it's a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity, great industry. It's growing. 
Another thing about our bachelor's program is we are a community engaged program. We do a lot of work out in the community, a lot of experiential learning. And then Dr. Sticka talked about a competitive entry. We don't have a competitive entry program. So what can you do? Well, fitness, personal trainer, you know, if you're into exercise and, and helping people get healthy, that's a great opportunity. Even a step above, if you wanna be in a clinic, an exercise physiologist is a great opportunity. Again, the rec therapy, recreation therapy, there's a national certification, we'll prepare you for that. Maybe you wanna work in a, in a corporate setting and help, uh, help promote corporate wellness and, and health and wellness within a setting like that, uh, or, or do some health education. If you wanna prepare for graduate school, again, maybe be a physical education teacher, or maybe you're really into to working out and you wanna maybe work with an athletics team and, and be a certified strength and conditioning coach. So we are all about health, fitness, physical activity, movement, uh, getting outside, all sorts of stuff. We also have a state-of-the-art human performance lab. We do testing, all sorts of stuff in our lab. It is the showpiece of our uh, program. You get time in that lab. It is a fantastic opportunity. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We also have courses that go in there. Again, back to our experiential learning, um, we have our lab for that case. We are also the fun place on campus to be. We offer everything from yoga, soccer, backpacking, kayaking, to um, Tai Chi, some other martial arts, uh, activity classes, weightlifting, cardio classes, all that is a uh, help. And I suggest that while you're looking at your schedules, um, you find something like this to maybe be a stress buster, uh, help you with that. Maybe it helps you uh, put an extra credit if you need one more to get financial aid or get a scholarship or get your 30 credits per year uh, under some of our UA scholarships. And you'll meet other students, I guarantee that. And last but not least, just something I like to say, a physical therapist will give you the strength to get out of bed. An occupational therapist will teach you how to get out of bed. And again, I'm selling recreation therapy. A recreational therapist will give you a reason to get out of bed. So. Um, if you have any further questions or further um, comments, you can look at our website. It's right there. There's a phone number there and uh, there's email and you can check out our Facebook page as well. And um, you can schedule an advising appointment on our homepage if you are into that step at the moment. Thank you for listening and I'll be back a few more times today. Thank you, TJ. Uh, Dr. Redmond. All right, good morning, everyone. I am going to share my screen and hopefully you all can see my slides. I am always so excited to follow whenever TJ presents uh, because when you think about health and wellness, you certainly always think about the movement side of the equation, but inevitably, I, at least I hope, your mind goes next to the food side of the equation. So I'm actually here to talk about dietetics and nutrition, which is all about food. And um, even if you've never thought about food as a science or food as something uh, you can study and make a career in, uh, everybody eats. So you have at least a little bit of an of a interest in food, even if you don't know it yet. So let's see if I can, there we go. All right, so let's talk about dietetics and nutrition as a program. And dietetics and nutrition prepare students to use advanced knowledge about food and nutrition and help prevent and treat diseases and promote health. Dietetics is people-focused, it's science-focused, it's evidence-based, uh, and it's actually the first steps towards a professional credential. So if you get a degree in dietetics and nutrition, there's a couple different outcomes for you. One is a dietetic technician, which these folks generally work in hospital settings and food service settings where they help to uh, help patients adhere to specialized diets. And then a step above that is the registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist. They're kind of used interchangeably. And registered dietitians are a step further. They have their bachelor's degree in their foods or um, dietetics program from an accredited program. They also complete an internship uh, and then they have to pass a national registration exam for dietitians. And these folks, as I'll show you in a couple different slides um, following this one, they, they work in many, many settings uh, in several different sectors of the workforce. 
Speaking of, okay, where do they work? Where can you work if you're you're a dietitian or diet uh, registered dietitian nutritionist? Definitely clinical settings like hospitals. If you are a science based person, you like doing calculations, you like problem solving. This is a really great setting for you. Um, trying to figure out, you know, what can I help give this person to help them get better in this very acute care setting? You can also work in outpatient facilities. This is much more health promotion focused, uh, getting to know your patients, having conversations. It could range from anything from, hey, I, I'd like to lose weight. Can you help me lose weight? To, uh, I have a gluten intolerance and can you help me find foods that are gluten-free but also give me the nutrients that I need? Public health nutrition, this is something that I specialize in. This is thinking big picture. So what are some of those higher level policy level initiatives uh, a good example of this would be Alaska, you know, Healthy People um, goals for Alaska, even the nation, Healthy People 2020, 2025. Uh, these are setting those big picture goals for the health of the nation focused on food and nutrition. You can work in school nutrition. Um, we all probably have memories of that and ideas for how we'd like to make it better. So like TJ mentioned, corporate wellness, health promotion. Uh, you always want to have the folks in there who help you with movement, but you also want to have the dietitians in there who can help you set some realistic food and nutrition goals. Higher education. You can go into academia, food industry, tons of jobs for dietitians as far as food and research development. You can work in food service management, private practice. Uh, you'll see a lot of um, a trendier word is like influencers right now on social media, but a lot of dietitians have their private practice and nutrition counseling uh, where they can help people on their own terms. Even grocery stores are hiring dietitians, government sports teams, you can even be in the military. And just to show you a couple different um, examples of that, these are some pictures from our program and interns and students who've gone through our program. And right there in the center at the top, you'll see a dietitian Ricky Keene, she's a sports dietitian from Alaska, specializes in sports nutrition and works with um, NFL teams and professional soccer teams across the country. Uh, some of these rural pictures we do uh, as part of our internship, we have a rural nutrition focus. So our interns travel throughout the state of Alaska, travel to these remote villages, learn about rural healthcare. So really exciting things happening in dietetics. Of course, the big question, um, you know, how much money can I make? What are my career aspects here? Uh, I kind of separated it out here, dietetics technician and registered dietitian. You can look at the average pay, what that equates to per hour, what the job outlook is. There's a lot of opportunity for both. Both are actually higher than the national average in terms of job growth. Um, you can see what's predicted in the next several years as far as new jobs. So lots of opportunity here for dietitians. <clears throat> and then, you know, besides the money, of course, we all want to know, are we going to make a positive difference? And I've listed several different examples of how you can make a positive difference in healthcare. Um, you can read through these at your own leisure, but just to highlight a few, you know, helping someone reach their goals, keeping someone alive. Uh, if you're interested in sustainability, farm to school networks, you can plan menus that really take the, those things into account. Right. Um, making groundbreaking research, research. I'm at five minutes. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'll just leave this here and then some contact information. If you have questions on a social media link, I hope to see several of you in our program. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to dental hygiene. Hello everyone. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Um, I don't think that did it either. I'm so sorry. Here, let me see if I can bring this up real quick. Um, my name is Carrie Schamberger and I am the program director for dental hygiene. I am, I have been a dental hygienist for 30 years and I um, am really um, fortunate to be a part of this program. And um, I just really want to share my screen with you. Let's see if I can get that up and running. Here we go. Perfect. 
So um, a little bit about our program, if you can um, see this, this is our class of 2022. These are some of our uh, students and it's really um, an awesome segue to follow Dr. Redmond's because um, we uh, specialize in oral health. So we heard about the food and nutrition and movement, but we do specialize in oral health. What is a registered dental hygienist? We um, are licensed oral health educators and we are also clinicians. Um, we work as part of a dental team um, to do preventative, therapeutic, and educational type um, treatments. And we help individuals and groups of people to have optimum oral health. A dental hygienist can be a clinician. They can also be an educator, um, researchers, administrators, managers, and um, we can be develop, uh, developers of preventive programs. We can be consumer advocates. Um, we can do sales and marketing and um, be editors and consultants. So um, our profession is so uh, exciting because there's so many different avenues a dental hygienist can take. You can work in a variety of settings as a dental hygienist. You can work in a private office. You can work in public health settings. Uh, you can work in schools um, and you can manage care uh, in correctional institutions as well as nursing homes. The responsibilities of a dental hygienist, you do preliminary exams, you do clean and remove stains and plaque and tartar off the teeth. We provide therapeutic treatments like fluoride and sealants to protect the teeth. Um, we have the ability to um, take dental x-rays and develop them. We learn um, specific states have different state statutes, but in the state of Alaska, where we have the ability to administer local anesthesias, uh, we can provide nitrous oxide sedation for our patients' comfort. Um, and then we always uh, document our treatment, um, and we really uh, educate our patients to um, take care of their oral health. Um, there's a lot of research out there that shows that the oral health um, of an individual is a direct window into systemic health. And so uh, we take that seriously as a dental hygienist to provide really good um, health care. Um, and just again, a picture of one of our students. And then here, um, the outlook of dental hygiene and the employment for dental hygiene is growing extremely fast. Um, the need for dental hygiene and uh, dental hygienists in the state of Alaska is also um, very, very high. Um, and uh, we are looking to um, put clinicians into our communities within Alaska to help meet the need of um, of our communities and provide really great oral health for um, the state of Alaska. One minute. And to contact our program, I have some information here. You can contact me directly. I'd be uh, willing to help uh, you answer any of your questions. I'm excited about our program. Um, you can also reach us here at um, the dental program's website. Um, and dental programs has two different avenues. We have a dental hygiene program as well as a dental assisting program. So we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, now this is a big one because there are so many different programs. Uh, we will move on to the School of Nursing. Hi there, uh, my name is Carla Hagen and I'm the director of the School of Nursing here at UAA. Um, I'm gonna quickly share my slides and I'm gonna be joined today by um, Dr. Morgan Brissett, who's gonna talk about our graduate programs. Uh, Assistant Professor Peter Varney will be able to talk a little bit about our clinical education and uh, simulation. And then Dr. Angela Trillio will talk about what we can do in the community. So with that, I'm hoping 
that you can see my slides. And do, does everybody see those? I'm hoping so. Great. So, um, wow, what a need for nurses in the state of Alaska. Uh, I have just learned, I'm new to Alaska, but I've just learned that uh, Alaska has one of the largest shortages of nursing nurses uh, in the entire United States. But I'm very excited that the work that we're doing here at UAA, and as you can see on this slide, that this program is delivered in more than one place. So you can see it's truly across the state of Alaska, and you're going to have that opportunity uh, to study nursing within your own community. Nursing, uh, similar to what other people, is definitely caring for people, and it's caring for people across the lifespan from birth until uh, until until death, and we have that great opportunity. Um, I think many of you know that nurses can work in the hospital, clinics, educators, researchers, just so many different opportunities. Here at UAA in the undergraduate program, so that's the first step, is uh, to become a registered nurse. We have both uh, the associate degree as well as the bachelor's degree, and then for those who already have our registered nurse who are licensed but don't have their bachelor's degree, we have that as well. And so um, I'm just very excited in the sense that nursing opens so many opportunities. Um, if you love people, if you wanna care for people uh, in different ways, then I would seriously um, ask you to consider that. I wanna turn it over now to um, uh, Dr. Morgan Brissett, who's going to talk to us a little bit about what advanced nursing looks like as well. So with that, I am going to try to advance my slide here. Morgan, I'll let you go ahead and talk while I'm doing the slide sharing. Okay, uh, good morning. My name is uh, Dr. Morgan Brissett, and I'm here to talk about the graduate department. I think um, the first thing is to go to graduate school, we're gonna need a four year registered nurse degree. You need to be licensed in the state of Alaska and we, you need at least a year under your belt, preferably two. So that gets you the, so that, so if you've got all that, you're good to go. Please come see us in the graduate department. All our programs are on online, which is fantastic because you can live anywhere in Alaska and attend school in a graduate level, which is really important because Alaska is big, we're vast, and it's really hard to commute to Anchorage if you live in Juneau. Uh, I've learned that too, because uh, I'm also kind of new to Alaska as well. We have a nice varied amount of programs, which is awesome. Uh, the first thing is if you decide you want to become a nurse practitioner, we offer both the family nurse practitioner program and the psychiatric mental health, which is community based uh, nurse practitioner program. Uh, if you're thinking now, what is the difference? Well, family and FNP, and this is my definition, we do birth to death and everything in between. So if you want to know what an FNP does, that's what we do. So you can specialize in peds, women's health, men's health, geriatrics, or the whole kit and caboodle. Psych mental health is actually one of the most crucial programs that we have because mental health is becoming in the forefront and we need bar none a lot more mental health providers. And that is a very valued program. So if you are really uh, feeling the call to be a mental health provider, then a psychiatric nurse practitioner is absolutely the way to go. Those are both master levels programs. When you complete it, you will be able to write your boards and off you go. We also have a nice route for those who want to do a uh, master's in education or uh, leadership. Uh, those are also very uh, important uh, roles for nurses to play. And again, all of this is online. For those that have a master's and are like, you know, hmm, I think I wanna be a nurse practitioner or I'm in education, but I'd like to branch a little bit. We have post-master certifications that you can take. So you can move around even after your master's and that um, gives you opportunities. The final thing is we actually do offer a doctorate of nursing practice. You need a master's to be able to apply for that program. And that will allow you to um, get your doctorate as a, um, you're not gonna be research-based nurse, you're gonna be an evidence practice nurse that translates evidence into practice by being a DMP. So again, nursing, we're very hands-on and we like to be very uh, clinically based and in the community. And we take the trend all the way through to our doctorate degree levels. I know that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dr. Brissett. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Assistant Professor Peter Varney at this point. 
Hey, Carla, can you slide the, uh, the slide down? I think I have it down, do I not? No. So okay. my name is Pete Varney. I'm talking about clinical education and simulation, and I'll be real brief. Uh, one of the benefits of COVID that we've had is we've developed a more robust program in simulation to be able to incorporate groups that are in remote sites with the Anchorage groups. Um, so multiple different sites can be able to work together and we can work as a school of nursing as opposed to just remote campuses. So we've been able to open our, our reach on what we can offer for high quality simulation experiences. Uh, for clinical opportunities, each remote site has clinical opportunities and at their local hospitals. And if they're not able to uh, meet their clinical needs or clinical hours, there are other accommodations that are made to bring students into Anchorage if needed. It's a really great program that I believe in. And um, if you'd like to join us, please apply. Thank you. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Torello. Angelia? Um, hi, if you can, um, I think I've got it. Okay, there we go. So um, <laughs> I'm Dr. Um, Angela Trujillo. Um, I'm really excited to talk about the population health and community health courses that we have at the School of Nursing. Um, these courses are designed uh, specifically to provide baccalaureate nursing students with experience working in the community on health promotion and injury prevention activities. This particular capstone course has been active for over 20 years. I will say our students have conducted health assessments around the state um, from Fairbanks um, into Southeast to identify the top five concerns for communities around the states. We've also conducted interpersonal violence awareness activities for the Anchorage uh, community as well as the military. Um, recently, we just completed an environmental health awareness um, for Fairbanks, Matsu, Anchorage, and uh, the Kenai Peninsula. And our students have been doing public service announcements that cover these topics, um, environmental health, reproductive health, summer activity, safety, and interpersonal violence awareness uh, during the COVID uh, experience. And we have gotten great feedback from our partnership agencies that they're very vocal about the added benefit of UAA nurses who are working in the community with this um, additional um, clinical service learning experience. Great. And Angelia, would you mind, since I didn't share the first two slides, putting this back to those two so that students can see where we're um, Actually, you can see then uh, the graduate nursing programs that Dr. Brissett shared with us, as well as the locations that we actually deliver the undergraduate programs. So we're looking forward to your questions and um, you certainly are able to reach out to us and we're very excited about the career. I think all of us are here because we love it and the variety of it. And there's just so many opportunities. And so with that, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity that we've had today to be with you. And I want to just jump in and say thank you so much for uh, putting that little note in there about the Swear to Care events being amazing. Those were um, definitely a very exciting project that we've done. And we're, we were really hoping that we were going to be able to do one more this year, um, but it's not going to happen. So anyway, thank you. All right, thank you so much, School of Nursing and Dental Hygiene and Dietetics and Nutrition and Hyper and Kinesiology. Um, that was an excellent panel. 